Hello everyone, welcome to The Storyist. Sometimes we forget that those people who we think might not be as useful as we expect them to be turn out to be the most helpful among others. Perhaps what we lack in ourselves is not the ability to see the goodness in people, but the will to believe that there still lies goodness in everyone. We just have to search deeply to be able to see them. Today, I will be telling you a story about a child who saves an entire class from a mass shooter. Stay until the end of the video to see what happens. Jay is considered a nerd kid in their class. His classmate often teases him for being so studious and for being obsessed with science and technology because they are not the usual things that typical grade schoolers like. But for Jay, he has been fascinated with the idea of science and using it for technology since he was six years old. Back then, he was watching a movie about kids who accidentally turned into spies, and they were using super advanced gadgets that turn into weapons at their will. Since he has watched that film, he has been fixated with sci-fi movies and other ideas of using science to fuel technology. He would often talk about this with his classmates, but they would cut him off and make fun of him. And worse, they would even bully him for being so different. They would kick him and laugh at him in front of their classmates, embarrassing him in front of the whole class. But Jay never fought back, because he used to think back then that someday, he would be intelligent enough that he would be able to create an invention that everyone would look up to. And perhaps by then, his classmates and bullies would reach out to him and apologize for bullying him in grade school. Now, Jay is already in the fifth grade, but he is still the same. His passion for science and technology never changed. At his very young age, he can already hack to different internet routers, computers, locked files, and many others. He has also learned how to use microchips to track calls and listen to them. He is not doing it for any dangerous reasons. He just knows how to do them because he stumbles upon its processes from time to time. His friends are still books and computers. Because of his obsession with studying technology, he has shut himself off from the world completely not caring about making friends and making people like him. Thus, he becomes the sad nerd that most kids don't like talking to. His classmates hate talking to him at school because he always talks about science and converting them into technology. His classmates obviously don't have the same interests as him, added by the fact that they don't understand the same things he is talking about. Due to this reason, he seldom makes friends. And once he starts making budding friendships with someone, he will often start incessantly talking about his tech stuff and the friend will eventually drift off. One day, Jay has come across a documentary on TV about creating fake bombs. He gets so fascinated about how the details in order to make it are so intricate, only geniuses can crack the process. For almost a month, Jay has spent all his extra time away from school crafting his own fake bomb. In order to complete the process of bomb creation, he has to create his own timer out of scratch. Just thinking about it is hard, and for Jay, it is indeed hard. But the difficulty level of his project is what makes the entire work all the more exciting for him. Learning how complicated his project is, he works harder for it. Until after exactly one month, he has finally created a fake bomb with his own self-destruct timer. In the documentary that Jay has watched, the police are using the bomb as a distraction for the suspects or criminals to run to the direction they want to trap them in. Jay has no intention of doing such, nor is he planning to use it in any way. He just wants the satisfaction or the feeling of having something hard done. However, what he didn't know was that the need for this fake bomb was just about to come. One fine morning, everything is going well in their classroom as usual. It is 7 in the morning, and on Mondays, Miss Holmes talks over their full hour to talk about astronomy. While she is busy talking and doing her lectures, a loud thud suddenly wakes up everyone, who are obviously still in their dreams as 7 a.m. classes are too early. Jay hears the loud thud too, especially that he is sitting at the farthest back seat, and the loud thud came from the room next door, just behind his back. The class is silenced for a moment, trying to figure out what the noise was. After a few moments, nothing happened, so to break the silence, Miss Holmes starts talking once again. But as soon as she opens her mouth, a masked man enters the classroom. He is holding a gun in his right hand and a blue backpack in his left. Miss Holmes is startled and she runs into the back of the classroom. All the other students follow her, until they are all curled up at one corner. Some of Jay's classmates are already crying, while Miss Holmes kept on praying. The shooter starts telling the students how he hates their school. This school, this classroom, is the very same classroom that I used to dream in. But this very same school shattered all of my dreams when they expelled me for selling drugs. But I just did that because I had no money, and now I am a homeless garbage. 
but I will take revenge on the school for ruining my future. The shooter narrates. Everyone shrieks at his last words. When they realize what's happening is not hostage taking, but rather a planned shooting, they realize they will all die. But Jay doesn't want to think the same way. He wants to believe there's still a reason out. Carefully, Jay stands up to walk slowly towards the perpetrator. His classmates gasp as he stands up, and Miss Holmes orders him to sit down, but he isn't listening. The shooter sees him and points the gun at him. Jay waits for him to shoot, but he doesn't. That is when he realized that he might have planned this all along, but he still hasn't tried doing it before. He has hesitation, and Jay will take that to his advantage. Jay asks him to calm down, and starts talking with both of his hands in the air. I feel like I don't belong here in this class because I am different, and my classmates always bully me. So I don't think I'd be a loss to them if you shoot me now. But at least, before you kill me, I just want to let you know that you are not alone," Jay calmly says. The shooter seems to be moved by his words, as he slowly puts down his hand holding the gun. His tears start streaming down, but he cries silently. Jay uses this opportunity to slide down his self-made fake bomb into the man's backpack. Without him noticing anything, he pulls himself together and points his gun to Jay. He raises both of his hands once again as the shooter does so. Why do you protect them if they bully you? The shooter asks. He is not mad, he seems desperate for answers. He looks like he is trying to seek for goodness in the world, even just a little shed of light. Jay stands tall in front of him and replies, Because I believe in the goodness of people. No matter how bad they treat you, I always try to seek kindness in them. And if you search deeply, it won't be that hard to see them later on. The shooter puts down his gun once again, and using this as a window of opportunity, Jay puts out his timer from his pocket. That's why I have to do this, Mr. Shooter. In one minute, this timer will cause the bomb I put inside your bag explode, Jay says. Startled and baffled, the shooter looks at his bag and sees a lighted bomb. He freaks out and he runs towards the school exit as fast as he can, leaving the bomb in their room. During their exchange, Miss Holmes has already called 911, and he thanks Jay for the distraction. As the shooter reaches the exit, he is caught by the police called by Miss Holmes. Jay's classmates are still shrieking, thinking that Jay's bomb will explode, but he reassures them that nothing bad will happen. He shows them the fake bomb, and his classmates adore him. They finally accepted Jay's love for science and technology, and since then, they have never been more interested in Jay's craft. Jay has earned more friends from that day forward. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.